Oh, hello, everybody. This is the one and only Gabe, and I would like to welcome you to the inaugural bike session. The bike sessions are going to be where we, the members of Bike, discuss pretty much anything while you watch us do stupid stuff in video games. Joining me today are the lovely Defier. You would think by his name that he's a girl, but you'd be wrong. Would you? You would. <laughs> I can be whatever I want to be, you cis white male with, with the privilege. <laughs> Take a step back, son. No, and also joining hello. me today is someone who would probably feel better if he was a girl, Sabercrit. That is true. I probably would feel a lot better. But enough about uh, your white privilege, cis male. Let's, uh, ta- what are we going to be talking about today? Today we're going to be discussing our exploits in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, uh, that game's been out for about a week as of this recording. Uh, I guess about a week and a day. This is a Wednesday. Yep. And uh, we have played, I think I've already clocked 40 hours into it. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit higher, but right at 50, yeah. Ridiculous amount of time for for a week, especially for uh, for you, since you work a regular 9-to-5. Uh, yeah, the 40 hours was tough to fit 50 in there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but needless to say, we've been having a lot of fun with it, despite the problems on the first few days. You know, there was, oh man, there was that terrible, terrible launcher issue the very first day. I couldn't even play the game for the first... 48 hours and some uh, I've already clocked 40 in and I couldn't play for the 40 first 48 but uh but then you know the fix for that was just absolutely ridiculous I had to disable my uh my dedicated video card my Nvidia card and then attempt to run the game using only my onboard card which surprisingly would work it wouldn't crash it, as long as I just stayed on the uh the title screen it wouldn't crash but then I had to go in and re-enable my Nvidia card and uh, since I only have one HDMI cable, uh, my, my secondary monitor is hooked up through a, uh, a DVI, uh, I would actually have to get up and change the cable every single time, multiple times, just to run this one game. And it was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. How something like that made it through Q&A to live, I just, I don't understand. That's mind-boggling. That's uh, something that I've been noticing with a lot of the AAA titles uh, lately. It's not just Rockstar. Uh, that has the issues, but there's been some really big game-breaking bugs that have gone through Q&A and actually made it to a live launch. I mean, thankfully, Rockstar did uh, patch it up fairly quickly, but 48 hours, as we know in gamer time, is an eternity. Absolutely. You pay you pay $60 for a game, and you expect on day one to actually be able to jump into it. And um, Kind of Ubisoft this a yeah, little bit. Ex- yeah, very much so. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely was, and uh, the strange thing is also is that this is the third iteration. I mean, it originally came out for PS3 uh, back in November, and then it was released and for uh, 2000. Yeah, and Xbox 360. Then it came out for PS4 and the Xbox One, and they also pushed back the PC release. Uh, was it two or three times? I believe Twice. Uh, Defire. Twice. Yeah. yeah, they pushed it back. It was supposed to be for January, and then they pushed it back to March 1st, and then they pushed it back again. No, they pushed it back to March 1st, then March 24th, and then finally April 14th. Was it March? Was, I don't remember the 21st date. Okay. I, uh, I remember that one of the dates was going to be the day after my birthday. So. It, may, it, may not have been, it, it may not have been March 1st then, but I, I know it was sometime yeah. in March, and they delayed it again. And, oh, man, every, every single time, it was just kind of heartbreaking. I know, you know, we wanted, to get them, we wanted them to get it right, but at yeah. the same point, it was just, yeah, I, it's been a year and a half already since it's been on consoles. Please hurry the fuck up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, and at the same time, you know, just something that big actually going through after they've already pushed it back twice. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the problem with this with this sort of thing is, with this sort of uh, development cycle of we'll patch it after it launches, is uh, it's really anti-consumer. And that's the, the problem with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it were, I mean, yes, when we talk about early access titles, uh, your Daisy or your Rust or things like that. We're buying into that, knowing we have incomplete products. That's part of that's part of the experience, honestly, is the testing. Yeah. And uh, I actually happen to enjoy it. But when I pay full price for a finished product, I expect that product well to be finished. And yeah. GTA Online no, not... wasn't. In fact, yeah, in some places it's still not. Well, we had that same problem uh, when it first launched with the console because GTA Online was originally supposed to launch with the release date of GTA Five. And they pushed it back. I want to say it was about six months altogether. Before oh, GTA they could... Online launched two weeks after. Oh, was it two weeks after? Yeah, it was only two, two weeks, weeks after. Weeks. I, huh. I I did play GTA Online when I had it for the PS3. 
I, I didn't play much uh, back then because, um, and, and am I right that the missions weren't even working properly at first? I, I seem to recall that. that. Um, but you couldn't get in. The, the first mission uh, for a lot of people, and I didn't have any issues, was completely fucked. Unless you unless you could get online completely and have every people join and communicate with the servers, you couldn't do that first mission. So you couldn't get you could not get online. That must have been the problem. I had. Tutorial. Yeah, is I, that the, I, I, the tutorial mission? Yeah, that's what that's what it was because I could I could run around in the tutorial area, but I couldn't actually finish the tutorial to go into a uh, real server. So uh, yeah. so this is a history that Rockstar has. Uh, has uh, established for itself. It is a pattern. However, I get into the DJ four <laughs> issues that never got patched. Exactly. <laughs> However, I will. I have to say this for all my complaints with how the launch of GTA five and GTA Online were handled for the PC. Oh my God! It's like the most fun I've ever had ever, ever. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely. I can definitely agree with that. Of course, I was lucky I did I didn't buy the game until after the launcher issue had already resolved, so I didn't have to worry about doing anything like that uh like that fix. But oh my oh my god, it's okay. I, I play a lot of Daisy, a ton of Daisy. And uh as such I love the map that is uh Chinaris, Chinaris, however somebody says it. There's like eight billion ways people pronounce it. Um But San Andreas as visualized and envisioned and encapsulated in GTA Online is just oh my god it's the best thing ever <laughs> it's the best map in any video game I've ever played because oh, it's yeah. so varied it's so alive it just feels there's such an attention to detail and yes it is the map we, same map we had on PS3 and uh, Xbox uh, 360 and then of course the PS4 and Xbox One but that map is still incredible. You know, I, it's been a year and a half since I played, and I'm still in love with that map. Uh, you're still it's discovering it does these... feel better on, on the PC as well. I mean, like, it feels more... I can't think of the right phrase. It feels more lived in. It feels like there's actually um, kind of a, a life that goes on around you. In, instead of when I played it on, on first gen, I felt like there was just... It, there, the, the world seemed a bit stark, comparatively. Mm -hmm. For me, anyway. I think part of that had to do with the fact that uh, Rockstar was able to do so much with the weather effects and that you actually have rain puddling in the streets. You actually have rain causing your tires to be slick and spin out and everything like that. So it's uh, really interesting, and I'll be happy to see uh, if Rockstar actually does what they did last year um, and do like a sort of snow environment when winter comes again if we're going to actually ha you know, see snow and ice on the roads too. Yeah, and also they still did that uh, July 4th thing as well, where there were, everybody had firework guns and things like that, and there were a bunch of new vehicles and presidential masks and things like that. I'd like, I'd like to see what they're going to do, uh, if they're going to continue to support these types of events. I imagine they would, because it seems like they're betting on GTA Online for the long haul. I hope so, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I definitely hope you are correct there. And I do want to say, coming up a little bit later in the show, we are going to be talking about our individual experiences in GTA Online, some uh, some fun things we've done. Hopefully we'll have some clips to uh, roll of that as well. I uh, do want to encourage you to keep listening. We're going to take a short break. And we are back. Welcome back to the inaugural bike session. Of course, I am your host, the one and only Gabe. And uh, Defire, during the break, you were telling me a little bit about something uh, you've heard, that there are already trainers in GTA Online? Yeah, yeah. First, I read that that there were there were trainers working in the single player mission. Hold, mostly... hold, that, hold that thought for just a second. Uh, explain for our, anybody who's listening what a trainer is. Sure, uh, a trainer is kind of is, is a cheating application that that goes in and uh, kind of hacks the uh, what are they called the the hex the hex within the application. So each each application will keep uh, a hex of whatever changes. And you can kind of monitor that by using by monitoring how the application is adding things and changing things. So you, if you play with it long enough, you can kind of figure out what is generated for certain stats. Like in Skyrim, you could you could add your archery after you saw one increase. You'd be like, "What changed? Oh, that changed. Let's bump that up more." So there's it's kind of it's kind of just like a cheating app. And they have one working in the single player, and now they're able to get it into the multiplayer. I think right now it just does money, but I've also seen ones that are um, m kind of map hacking on the races. That's really, really depressing to me, especially this quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, I normally would be against against anything like this in an online game, but uh, just tr using a trainer on your individual stats 
doesn't really bother me so much because like in the amount of time I've been playing so far, I've already almost maxed out two stats. So like that wouldn't bother me so much, but uh, being able to cheat during individual events, like be, like you said, being able to map hack is just I found that to be absolutely uh, deplorable. And if you're yeah. hearing this and you're a cheater, I pretty much hate you. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I remember uh, this was a big problem when GTA Online uh, launched um, for PS3, is that uh, there were people that actually, they'd go in and they uh, were able to br basically break the bank, give themselves as much money as they possibly wanted to. And uh, Rockstar's response to this was to... First off, of course, ban the accounts of people that actually did this, but then these people would actually unload this money onto other people. If those other people accepted these large sums of monies, their accounts also risked getting banned as well. Yeah, the reason for uh, that sort of thing, why that happens, is usually bans are sent out in waves, and uh, when determining bans, they look for things like uh, illicit funds received. This happens in a lot of online games. It's not just uh, GTA. In uh, WoW, for example, World of Warcraft, uh, several years ago, there was a major gold uh, duplication um, exploit, and uh, some of the people sending the gold around uh, to others were doing it to people who had absolutely no idea that this was an issue, and there was a big uh, explosion, you might call it, on Reddit, uh, as so often is the case with Reddit. Uh, when uh -huh. this when this happened because of all the false bannings uh, that were done in that game and hopefully this won't happen a ton in uh, this time around in GTA Online I do want to of course warn everybody that if someone you don't know sends you money don't accept it yeah please don't accept it um, unfortunately it is uh, innocent bystanders that can get caught up in those ban ways like that uh, so. You know, just make sure that you do accept money from people that you know, or in my case, I still wouldn't accept money from Gabe, even though I know him, because I just don't trust him. Dirty money, man. Dirty it is. Money. It's always dirty money. Give me money. It's probably a good idea not to trust me, no matter what you do, because, I mean, even if you're on my team, I, I'll straight admit, I'm a team killer in games, but, you know, I usually wait until we've won, and then I'll kill you. But, uh, but you know, I That's do it true. because, because I, I enjoy trolling my friends, and now, I, I will say, I only team kill when I'm in a game with people I actually know, or someone who's one of my uh, good online friends that I've gamed forever. I do not do it when I am playing with uh, people I don't know. You know, I'll sabotage a win if we're, if it's just the guys and I'm just wanting to screw you guys over. But, uh, but you yeah. know, but, but people I don't know, you're safe until I do know you. Relatively safe. Relatively. Somewhat safe. Somewhat. But, um... Back to the topic at the hand with uh, with trainers. Yeah, unfortunately, cheating is... I don't want to say it's just something we have to accept in online games, but it's in just about every game that there is. Uh, there's not a lot that can be done about it except to play on private servers, which at least GTA already has. You know, uh, for the most part, that's what we've done. We've not done a whole lot of uh, playing with... Um, with uh, other people when we were all gaming together. I think part of the reason that is, and, and at least for me, the, I, I'm only speaking for myself here, but I don't like how GTA Online allows you to see where every other person on the map is. Uh, if it were, I mean, the map's huge, so if it were more like uh, DayZ and you had no idea where other people were and you just ran into them, that would be cool. Because that that would make, that would make, uh, make everything more deliberate pacing make it uh, less arcadey and um, more exciting because you wouldn't necessarily know if somebody's around the next corner or not. Um, however, the way it's set up in GTA right now is more deathmatchy, and I, I understand maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe that's just what the game is supposed to be, but it doesn't appeal as much to me playing with, uh, with people I don't know that way. That's a good point. I mean, and, and to their credit, they do they do allow that passive mode, which is really helpful. You know, just have to get just after you get out of a mission, you can go deposit your money, and then you can then you can go active again. But I see what you mean. I mean, you you see where everyone is, and you just if and all you if all if all you're going to do is deposit the money, why would you even go? Why would you even go active? You don't know these people, and they're just going to randomly kill you. Go yeah, ahead, that's pretty much. It. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, uh, that's. Pr I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, of course, you don't even have to really worry about depositing. You know, actually going to the ATM and depositing your money anymore. As long as you can get into a safe alleyway, you can deposit it pretty quickly uh, through the use of the in-game phone. And that's definitely uh, a good thing, but that still doesn't eliminate the uh, the problem of if you can see where everybody is on a map, uh, 
yeah, well, deathmatch games don't allow that, you know. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, that that's in most deathmatch games, that's a very um, frowned upon hack to be able to uh, view a map with everybody on it. But in GTA Online, we're just all able to do that, and I I do think that's that's an issue. I do think it's a problem. I can agree with that. And I, I certainly I certainly think that it's expected practice, but I don't know necessarily that I would agree with that. Or I would actually kind of like the option to have to set those up differently. You know, maybe I create my own session and, you know, I invite a bunch of people and maybe I have that as an option that I turn off. Yeah, I could I could agree to that or maybe even set your own session and set it to public, but still have those turned off. Absolutely. Sure. And maybe that sort of thing will be patched in later. I, I you know, I don't know. Um I'm sure that there's a ton of suggestions uh, that Rockstar will take, and Rockstar is usually pretty consumer friendly. They do kind of listen to uh, the gamer, the gamer community. That that being said, I think they still have not done a good job as far as making this a PC port. Uh, there's so much in the game that it's obvious that it has console roots. Uh, now yep. they did they did change the ridiculously stupid way of generating your character's uh, skills in GTA Online. The PS3 version uh, had the you know the dumb thing where you had to pick like your uh, your day job and your hobbies and that gave like your your stats. That was so annoying. I forgot I about that. that. that so dumb. Yeah, I remember that. That was a big big uh, turnoff for playing GTA Online for me. Was that character creation? But, okay, we unfortunately we've talked a lot about a lot of negative things so far. So for the third mm-hmm. and final segment of the show. We are going to shift gears, and we're just going to gush for a bit. We've given our criticism. <laughs> we are just going to go all out and fanboy all over the place. Fanboy mode activate. And with fanboy mode activated, I do want to continue to encourage you to keep listening. We'll have to take a break and be right back. Welcome back once again to the Bike Sessions. As always, I am your host, the one and only Gabe, the Fire, and... Sabercrit are joining me still, and uh, we spent the first couple couple of, of sections really uh, sort of, I don't know, we had some negative things to say about the game, despite we the n- fact that we have loved GTA Online so far. We were being a little bit nitpicky with it, though. I mean, overall, GTA, uh, GTA Online has been probably a very fantastic and positive experience. Exactly, and that's what I want, what I want to focus on now, is I want to kind of just give us this last little bit to talk about why this game has been so great because we have played so much of it and if it weren't great we wouldn't play so much of it so uh i'll I'll start us out here and i'll uh i'll I'll give a story of uh something that happened last night the fire missed this one unfortunately because uh i don't know where the hell you were but you weren't with us Uh, i think you probably had real life stuff going on real life should never come before video games everybody knows that ever i mean come on what kind of gamer are you exactly i know i know (laughs) so so we just dis- <laughs> <laughs> so what what happened is last night I, I was playing with um, I was playing with um, Sabercrit, our buddy uh, Cricket, our uh, buddy uh, Demore, and uh, we were just kind of for, for a little while we were running missions. Then we decided we were just going to go explore the map because we hadn't done that before. So we end up at Mount Chiliad, and uh, of course at Mount Chiliad there's the uh, the places to uh, to skydive. So so we decide we're we're going to skydive off of uh, motorcycles at one point. And we're going to ramp off the side and deploy our parachutes, you know, jump from the uh, motorcycle, deploy our, deploy our parachutes, and go sailing off into the night. Needless to say, things didn't work out that way. So, what ends up happening first is we're going up uh, Mount Chiliad on motorcycles, and we couldn't find, we only found one dirt bike. Uh, the rest were going up on, uh, just on choppers, which of course didn't go so well. It was really hard to get up on uh, on choppers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Sabercrit knows where I'm going with this. And uh, Sabercrit spent um, most of the time repeatedly falling down the mountain. <laughs> and so he falls yeah. down the mountain over and over and over again. I mean, like, we're waiting on him like a good 30 minutes. We're all on the summit waiting on him. And so we decide, in the meantime, because it's, uh, it's like, it's a nice sunset we're gonna uh, take a selfie on top and he's like wait for me wait for me and he rushes to the top as quickly as he can and he finally makes it he goes out to the onto the uh, little i don't know i guess you'd call it a pier 
uh, that's up there to, uh, to dive off of. And uh, he rushes out onto it, and then he just keeps going and falls right back down to the bottom of the mountain again. No, I did not fall down to the bottom of the mountain. I only fell down to that little... Uh, there's like a little overhang underneath the dock. I still died, but it allowed me to respawn on the other side of where that overhang was. So all I had to do was run back around to get up to you guys. More of a successful kind of failure. Then. It was. It was a very successful okay. failure. <laughs> Unlike the first time that I fell, and then I just keep, kept falling and falling and falling. I, I do want you to know that that you running off the uh, the dock like that. I do have a. Uh, I do have that recorded. You I've got that. Thank footage. God. Thank well, God. the funny thing is, is that it's not so much of a run if you actually watch it. It's like you see my character stop and then just take a couple of steps and hit midair and uh, just oh, 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 kind of wildly oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I, I have that recorded. I've watched Jenkins. I have watched it since then. Oh, no. You did not stop at all. <laughs> That's doctored you, footage then. That's doctored you, footage. You run, you run and it, it, it's great because, like, I can tell you're, <laughs> uh, I can tell when I looked at it again, again that you were uh, focused at me. Because uh, which makes sense, because I was the one taking the selfie, so you were gonna run over there, and you run, and like your face is looking right at me, but your legs are still going straight, <laughs> <laughs> and you just go. I I'm I'm going to the, while we're talking about this, I'm going to like put that on repeat while we're talking about this right now, mm -hmm. and uh, so everybody can see exactly what happens. Oh my goodness! Over and over again. Perfect. Over and over and over. <laughs> And that was probably the best moment for me last night. Uh, oh, that was a fantastic moment. It was uh, hilarious. Except for the fact that, you know, we made all this planning. We did all this stuff to get all the bikes up there and everything. And who was the only person that actually successfully managed to jump? I'll give you credit on that. When when yeah. we actually got the, finally got the jump uh, set up, I go over the edge, I release my parachute, and I immediately slam it to the side of the mountain. <laughs> Cricket yeah, goes over the edge, and I don't think his parachute oh, no. even deployed, did it? Cricket didn't even go over the edge. He kept hitting the sides of the dock. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, because the only part of that I watched over and over again was you running off the edge. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, so we've given a little story there to fire. Tell, tell us one from uh, from your experiences. They can include us or not. It's up to you. Uh, actually, I haven't spent a whole hell of a lot of time with online since the PC version dropped. Um, when it initially when it initially came out, what I liked was was uh, teaming up with somebody else and going to hunt uh, hunt the bounties that were placed on different players. So I would hop in a chopper with somebody and just sit there and snipe whoever had the bounty on them and listen to them on the mic. And then if they got really really angry, then we just go find them again and again and again. So you were trolling. Nice trolling. Oh, absolutely trolling. Oh, it was, it was brilliant. Yeah, we should um, but one of the things... Great. What's that? We should troll sometime. That'd be great. Absolutely, yeah. man. I'm, I'm so down. Um, but one of the things that's new in the PC version that we haven't really talked about was the, was the, is the editor. And man, that is really, really fleshed out. Um, I would just play for a couple of minutes and find a lot of cool stuff I could use something with. Not even quite machinima stuff, just to kind of highlight how, on, on Mac settings, how insanely beautiful this game looks. It looks fucking stellar. Well, that's something I have to say about even on uh, on normal settings because uh, you know my PC was a beast three years ago, but it's not anymore. You know, so uh, so I can only play on normal, and on normal it's still fucking gorgeous. I know, man. Oh yeah, it's it's beautiful. I mean, uh, you know, Rockstar. We have given them a little bit of criticism on uh, the port, but the graphics they actually really upped the ante, I think, with this one and made it really, really accessible to a wide range of PCs. You don't have to have, you know, a multi-thousand-dollar machine to run this game. Yeah, it looks like it looks like you should. But you don't. I mean, I have a workstation computer from a local TV station, for God's sakes, and I'm still able to run this. Yeah, that's the thing, is, like, even on a uh, machine that's three years old like mine, I still get uh, constant 60 frames uh, per second. There are have been a couple of times that it's gotten lower than that, but I think that's more uh, have been uh, areas being bugged, because if I die and uh, come back in, it reloads the same area as 60 frames a second again. So, um, so I think that's all that's going on there. But, man, absolutely gorgeous. Every pretty much everything in the game except for the doors on ammunition for some reason <laughs> I yeah, know that's a yeah, weird some thing of the, some of the low textures are, are too low and I, and I agree with that there's that there's like some posters and stuff and a lot of things with text just do not show up well you can't you, you can't read them on normal 
legitimately cannot. And it's weird that that, are, that certain textures look better than others, but that is the case, at least in my experience. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention to that, but um, yeah, it's overall such a gorgeous game anyways. Oh, uh, n- another thing last night that, last night in particular that uh, you and I did, uh, Saber Crit, was uh, we were running around with Cricket uh, doing the uh, the water chase that eventually led to the docks. Uh, led to, oh, uh, the docks. Yeah, that, that was... That was wonderful. So basically, what we did is we were down at the uh, at the pier at the fun fair. I have to say it like Nico Bellic does the fun fair. Fun the fun fair. We're at the fun fair, and uh, we decide we're going to uh, just beat everybody up on the beach. <laughs> so, so we we just yeah you know, as we, you are wont to do in Grand Theft Auto. As, as you are wont to do, we weren't shooting anybody on the beach. We were beating them up. Pretty much everybody just running. Either in... players or pedestrians. Oh, pedestrians, pedestrians. Yeah, it was all, it was pe- just, all pedestrians it, and beach bums. Right, it was just to get uh, get a body count from punches. That's all it was for. And so, we, okay. uh, so of course, and then we just lead the cop uh, cops in. And so we just decided to hold a uh, final stand for the night at the edge of the pier. And we did that for what forty five minutes of not, of just fighting the police. Yeah, it was a good thirty forty five minutes. I mean, we had ramped up our star rating to four stars and everything. They were sending the SWAT after us. And yeah, it was just it was such an epic. It was almost a cinematic moment. Cinematic moment for nothing. I might, I yeah. might add, for exactly. absolutely, for we had no stakes involved in this <laughs> at all. <laughs> but um, that's fantastic. That's that's what I used to do with GTA Three. Is like you know, just find find a good spot on top of the hospital, mm-hmm. attract as many police officers as possible, and just rail on them with the uh, with the RPG. Yep, exactly. And then the tanks come out. It takes like three what? rockets for the tanks in the air. Uh, yeah. Boom, boom. So, really quickly, guys, before we go, what's something you're looking forward to doing in uh, GTA Online that you've not done yet? Starting with you, Defire. Uh, more heists, really. Um, I we, we tried one and we couldn't really get very far on it. Aside from the inaugural one, the inaugural one's crazy easy. But the the second one, um, kind of kind of nerfed it a bit. Um, I'd like I'd like to just try out some more heists. They seem they seem really really cool, and it's something I've been waiting on since uh, the next gen version. Well, I'm sorry, since since they dropped on the next gen version, which I think was in December, mm. so really excited about that. Um, that's pretty much all I got, um, and just kind of getting more cars and stuff. I don't know, stuff like that should be good. Fair, fair. Saber crit. Yeah, um, I'm gonna agree with the fire on that. Of course, I haven't had a chance to try out any of the heists yet. Not even the uh, the first one. I did just get up to be able to qualify to host the heist if I got the high high end apartment. Um, but yeah, definitely the heist, of course, you know, been looking forward to that ever since the first gen, uh, they announced the heist, I think it was like, going to be six months afterwards and it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. So here we are about 20 months later and, uh, finally able to play the online heist that Rockstar, uh, put so much, you know, time and effort into hopefully. And, uh, it should be a lot of fun, especially if we can get a, you know, full crew on them. Yeah, I, I do agree. Uh, with with you guys about the heist, but I'm also going to have to go in a different direction as far as things I'm looking forward to. The main thing I'm looking forward to is mayhem. Just coming up with more and more over-the-top, ridiculous things we can do and then record to uh, to laugh at later. Like, you know, going, of going off the top of Chili Ads is one of them, but I'm sure we can come up with something, uh, something to top that. Maybe not in the literal sense, elevation-wise, but... Uh, but that's what I'm looking forward to is just the uh, the creativity that uh, destruction can breed. Have you seen how many see how many pedestrians you can punch to death before you get killed by the cops without using guns, stuff like that? Uh, possibly. I mean, that's yeah. that's a or, try, or try, maybe trying to play Frogger in traffic. Oh, I tried to play Frogger in traffic and lost last night. Yeah, stuff like that though. Yeah, I feel you. Yep. Try to create your own challenges. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, just to get out in the world uh, in the sandbox and play in it. Yeah. Well, it looks like that is all the time we have for this evening. I do want to thank you for listening. As always, I'm the one and only Gabe, being joined by Defire and Sabercrit. And from Bike, we just want to say bike on and have a good one. Bike on, everyone.